Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I am going to be pulling the inlet manifold off of this BMW 520D to see if it's had the swirl flaps replaced. If it hasn't, we're going to be replacing them with blanks and uh, I'm going to show you the process. Uh, this is the BMW M47 engine, so it's a, the 2 litre 4 cylinder diesel uh, engine which was used in the 320D, 520D, 318 uh, in, in a slightly different uh, format. Um, however, it's it's not too dissimilar to the uh, M57 uh, engine, which is the uh, six-cylinder version used in the uh, 525D, 530D, 330D, etc. Um, the process is pretty much the same, it just has a two extra cylinders. That's all. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's get some tools out and crack on and have a look at what we're going to be doing. Okay then, cracking straight on. First thing we need to do is uh Ooh, take the top cover off. Now the reason uh, the reason that this is um, a job that needs doing is because there's a widely reported failure of the swirl flaps. Now, uh, hopefully, if they're still in there, I'll be able to show you what they look like. But the problem with them is over age and time. The fact that they get an absolute hammering um, from the byproducts of the EGR and all that sort of stuff. They they're made of stainless steel, but. They're, they're, they're fairly weak and what happens with them is, is they, they, they fracture, break and then they effectively fall into uh, the inlet track where the, where, the, uh, where the inlet valves are and cause all sorts of carnage uh, as I'm sure you can imagine. Now what we want to try and do is remove them. Now the purpose of them is to um, swirl the mixture uh, in order to you know give you a better rate of burn uh, it suppose, supposedly um, improves the um, environmental aspects of the, the burning process however removing them and blanking them causes no ill, Ill feeling to the car whatsoever so uh, so yeah so that's what we're going to achieve there we are that's that one off so now as you can see we've got the inlet manifold completely exposed so what we're going to need to do next yeah. Old uh, the old sound deadening seems to have uh, been past its best. What we need to do next is uh, remove everything that's connected to the inlet manifold and all the bolts connected to the inlet manifold to the cylinder head. Right now, this panel here it isn't necessary to remove this. However, just there is a, something I need to do just behind here, and it'd be easier for you to see if I do. So it's only held in with two torque screws. So let's get them out. And there we are, that's one side. Okay, <clears throat> now then, what I need to do, on the inlet pipe work from the intercooler is disconnect that connector. I need to disconnect that connector. That one I'll just pull out, and then we could pop that to one side. Now, the EGR valve, that is most likely going to be absolutely stinking so what we're going to do is as we're going to have it off anyway is i'm going to remove it completely from the car i've got a can of ejr cleaner and i'm going to give it a good clean out in the process of doing this uh, but uh yeah we'll come back to that later on what we'll do is we'll start stripping everything off the inlet manifold and uh what i'll do i'll i'll um take it all apart take everything off and i'll speed it up just to uh just to uh, whiz through um, and then i'll bring you back in when we're about to pull the inlet manifold off the head
I think that one I'll leave till after I've got the manifold off. Right, let's get the vacuum line off it. <coughs> So vacuum line off. All right, everything else. We'll take that last bolt off. Once the manifold's off, I can't get into it to uh, to get it off. Right. Next, let's unplug all the injectors. Okay, one, two, little torque bolts. <laughs> Oop, wrong side. And there we go. That's the one room to the injectors out of the way. Okay, next thing. There's a tie wrap holding this part of the loom to the back of the manifold. Let's get that out of the way. <coughs> then, all that we've got to do is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts here. Uh, and there's one, two, three, four, and five nuts uh, here that we need to remove. And then that is all that's holding the inlet manifold to the head. So we get these ones off first, 10 mil, I think. They look like they're 10 mil. And I'm pretty sure these are 10 or 11. 11s, all right, these are 10. I think the nuts are 11s. So let's crack all these off. really awkward. And these are all captive, so you don't need to worry about them falling out. Okay, next. nuts which are 11 mil and these obviously you do need to retrieve these Actually, on the 320D, this is a lot easier to access than it is on the 330D, uh, being as there's an extra two cylinders and it takes up all of this space. So bear that in mind. Right. 
pretty sure I haven't forgotten anything, so this should now lift off. Oh, hang on, I have forgotten something. As always, the uh, the dipstick mount, the uh, the bracket for the dipstick does bolt onto. the side of the manifold. So let's wind that off. A few little bits on here that are quite awkward to access. But Everything can be done with a basic socket set. It's not too, not too bad. There's nothing really extravagant required to do this. Oh yeah, and another vacuum line. I forgot that. One. There is one more vacuum line around here. <laughs> Just here and a connector, but that does pop off. It's like a, it's like a vacuum valve. It's just a pain to get into to pop it off. That's all. Off your pop, come on. No, you don't want to do it. Right, okay, we'll do it the hard way. There. And if I don't disconnect the hose and the connector, and the same under here, there's another another valve. They're basically like vacuum valves that allow. Oh, come on. And this one doesn't want to come off either, so. Right then, hopefully now it will come off. Uh, what have we got? Oh, another vacuum line. Come on. Right, interestingly enough, this has had the swirl flaps blanked. So what we would have in here is a rod on the outside, which is what goes through these runners, to each of the, each of the flap units. And inside here, there would be a flap, but each one's been removed. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the inside of a swirl flap track before what I'll do is I'll put some pictures up from a previous one that I did which was caught just in time um, the owner of the car was incredibly lucky to get away with what he got away with because um, it was uh, it was a ticking time bomb that one so I'll put the pictures up now so you can uh, so you can see them but yeah so it didn't take too long to get it apart just to check so it's not a uh, it's not a total loss but at least the owner of this car now has got peace of mind that it's uh, done and that they're not going to fall off and uh, cause massive catastrophic damage to the engine. Okay then, so what I'm gonna do, rip the EGR off, give it a quick clean while it's off, and then uh, get it all back together again.
Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to, while it's off, give this a good clean out because these do get bogged inside, so why not? Okay then, the EGR valve. I mean, it's not terrible. I have seen a darn sight worse than this. Um, so I'm guessing that when, when the, uh, when the, uh, the blanks were fitted, that the, this was given a clean at that point. Uh, what we do need to make sure is that the, the valve can move freely, which it can. Right, okay, so, and the butterfly. Yeah, the butterfly moves freely. What, what we're gonna do, EGR cleaner, give it a good dousing. All over actually, because it's pretty bogged on the outside as well. As you can see, it's a bloody good degrease in this stuff. And what we can do then, get a nice brand new toothbrush, <laughs> which I'm using in my case. Get in there, and give it a good, a good scrub. What I'll do, obviously, speed this up. So you can uh, come back in once I've uh, once I've cleaned it. See you in a sec. It's a little damn sight better than there than it was before. It's not perfect, but good enough. There we go. Let's get it back on the uh, let's get it back on the manifold. Right then. Okay, so let's get the uh, all the connections remade. Connections and the vacuum connections. You don't get a great deal of room to play with under here. Uh, where's the last one? Vacuum connection. Get on. Get on that. There we are. That's all the electrical connectors and their relevant vacuum connections all refitted. Now let's slot that back on. on it's 
two outside ones are quite easy to get into. Naturally the ones in the middle will be a little bit tougher but not too difficult, just hold it in with a finger. Come back and nip all them in a minute. Let's get all these down first. Back on. Back in. Okay. Let's get all these on. sorted right all i need to do next is put the covers on the top uh, and that's this done fire it up make sure that there's uh, no uh, no vacuum leaks no, uh, anything like that make sure everything runs fine um okay so in this instance obviously the swirl flaps have been replaced which is a good thing you know it shows that the previous owner obviously uh, obviously cared enough to get that done now obviously the current owner he's only had the he's only had the car a couple of weeks so he wanted to uh, he wanted to get it done or at least checked just to make sure give him the peace of mind that they're there because otherwise it's uh, it's one of those burning things in your mind you're like oh are they gonna are they gonna fail are they gonna fail so if you haven't had yours done i recommend you do at the earliest opportunity to avoid catastrophic engine damage okay so uh yeah in this instance he uh, he didn't need them so we can return them to the ebay seller uh, the blanks that he bought um we can return them to the ebay seller for a refund uh, all being well so anyway uh thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and you found it informative um if you uh, if you want to see future videos from kev shed then uh, then please uh, click that subscribe button hit the notification bell for notifications from the channel every time i post a video and uh, i'll see you all again for the next one thank you very much bye bye